Hello, good day everyone. My name is Darlena Birch, MBA, RDN, and most importantly, public health dietitian. Welcome to my YouTube channel where I discuss U.S. federal nutrition programs, the important role they play in ensuring the health and well-being of all Americans, and how public health dietitians work tirelessly to support these amazing programs. All views expressed on this channel are my own and do not represent the opinions of any entity whatsoever with which I have been, am now, or will be affiliated. Today I'm going to talk about how the WIC program supports breastfeeding. As I've stated in earlier videos, there are four pillars to the WIC program. One, nutrition education. Two, breastfeeding support three supplemental foods, and four referrals to health and social services. Now, before I speak specifically to how the WIC program supports breastfeeding, I first want to highlight the benefits of breastfeeding. One thing I wish I learned more about during my nutrition education is the benefits of breastfeeding. While I learned a little bit about it during my nutrition through the life cycle course, it was pretty much glazed over, and the vast majority of what I've learned regarding breastfeeding has largely been through my work in WIC. I do want to clarify that I'm by no means trying to shame women or make them feel bad for choosing not to or being unable to breastfeed. I also want to acknowledge that there are many women who are unable to breastfeed due to employment at jobs that do not implement breastfeeding friendly policies. Lastly, I want to point out that I was not a breastfed baby and I turned out perfectly fine. So obviously just because you weren't breastfed or you didn't breastfeed your infant doesn't mean you're a terrible mother or human being. I do however want to take time to highlight how beneficial breastfeeding is because as a society I do think that this is something we could work on and while we are making a lot of progress and strides to supporting breastfeeding within American culture, I very much hope for a world where we are way more supportive of breastfeeding as a whole. For women who breastfeed, breastfeeding may reduce the risk of breast cancer, ovarian cancer, type 2 diabetes, and postpartum depression. And for infants, breastfeeding may reduce the risk of obesity, lower respiratory infections, type 2 diabetes, asthma, and SIDS, also known as sudden infant death syndrome. Research shows that if 90% of women breastfed exclusively for six months, it could result in nearly 13 billion saved in the US each year and 1,000 infant deaths being prevented each year. So now I'm gonna transition into talking about how the WIC program supports breastfeeding. In the program's early years, breastfeeding promotion efforts were initiated at the local level. In the mid-1980s, the Food and Nutrition Service of the United States Department Department of Agriculture launched a three-year project to study the range of breastfeeding promotion and support efforts nationwide. The results were published in its 1988 Promoting Breastfeeding in WIC, a compendium of practical approaches, and it presented case studies of creative and successful practice models in selected sites across the country. The following year, Congress mandated that $8 million be set aside specifically to support breastfeeding. In 1992, a WIC food package was created specifically to encourage breastfeeding for fully breastfeeding women. It included fish and increased amounts of other foods, thereby representing the largest change made to the food package between 1975 and the 2007 issuance of the interim rule. In my previous episode, I talked about the WIC food package. That 2007 interim rule is what led to the 2009 food package changes. In 1997, the Secretary of Agriculture officially launched the Loving Support Campaign during the celebration of World Breastfeeding Week. And in 2004, FNS launched the Breastfeeding Peer Counseling Program, an initiative that brought the importance of breast milk for human babies to the forefront in WIC. In 2009, FNS incentivized exclusive breastfeeding by creating a more robust food package for breastfeeding mothers who received no supplemental formula for their infants. The WIC community has achieved numerous successes as a result of the staff's breastfeeding promotion and support efforts. Over the past two decades, breastfeeding initiation rates have increased dramatically. In 1998, only 42% of WIC mothers initiated breastfeeding, but by 2016, the WIC breastfeeding initiation rate had increased to 71%. An FNS commission analysis conducted between 1998 and 2013 reported breastfeeding duration rates among WIC mothers had also increased, with the WIC breastfeeding rate at one month postpartum rising by 85%, while the rate for three to 12 month old infants more than doubled during the same period. Common obstacles to breastfeeding faced by WIC mothers include lack of transportation, financial means and or insurance, and unavailability of services within the community, which often result in suboptimal or no lactation care. Therefore, WIC promotes breastfeeding as the optimal infant feeding method in five key ways. One, through breastfeeding peer counselors provided through the Breastfeeding Peer Counseling Program. Two, lactation consultants. Three, classes and support groups. 
four educational materials, and five hotlines for questions. So first, I'm going to discuss breastfeeding pair counselors who are provided through the Breastfeeding Pair Counseling Program. Unfortunately, lower income women in the U.S. experience lower breastfeeding rates than middle and higher income women. In addition to income, race and ethnicity also plays a role in breastfeeding disparities in the U.S. African American women experience significantly lower breastfeeding rates than white and Hispanic women. Barriers to breastfeeding for these vulnerable groups include family and social pressures, a rapid return to work after delivery, lack of facilities to breastfeed or pump in the workplace, and targeted marketing by the infant formula industry. By helping race racially diverse low-income pregnant women and new moms overcome these barriers, WIC plays a vital role in improving breastfeeding rates and minimizing breastfeeding disparities. One of WIC's most effective breastfeeding promotion strategies is its peer counseling program. As I stated earlier, the Breastfeeding Peer Counseling Program was launched in 2004 and it uses an evidence-based peer-to-peer model that connects pregnant and postpartum women with paraprofessional breastfeeding counselors who come from the same neighborhoods and speak the same language as WIC participants. WIC peer counselors who are often current or former WIC participants with experience breastfeeding their own children provide counseling services in person, in groups, over the phone, via video call, through texting or chatting, and or during home visits. Peer counselors understand the difficulties and provide realistic and practical guidance as a result of shared personal backgrounds and experience in ways that most health professionals cannot. In addition, peer counselors are more cost-effective than professional lactation staff, and therefore WIC is able to hire a higher number of peer counselors than professional consultants. WIC's breastfeeding support activities are strongest when lactation support professionals, peer counselors, and nutrition staff work together to provide a seamless nutrition continuum of care for WIC moms. A large body of evidence demonstrates that participation in the WIC breastfeeding peer counseling program is associated with an increased rate of breastfeeding initiation, and some studies have also found that participating leads to longer breastfeeding duration and improve exclusivity. Pregnant and postpartum WIC participants with access to a peer counselor report that they highly value the program and are especially appreciative of peer counselors' warmth and accessibility. Peer counselors are especially effective at increasing breastfeeding initiation and duration rates among African American WIC moms. So next, I'm going to talk about lactation consultants. As breastfeeding rates rise in WIC, so too do the number of mothers with complex breastfeeding needs. Research indicates that 92% of mothers across socioeconomic lines report feeding problems on day three postpartum. Currently, a number of other professionals such as certified lactation counselors, certified lactation educators, and certified lactation specialists are on staff within WIC clinics to provide valuable support to breastfeeding women. These individuals fulfill specific roles within a defined scope of lactation practice. Their support may extend beyond offering help with routine breastfeeding issues. However, the International Board Certified Lactation Consultant, aka the IBCLC, is most qualified to provide clinical care of the breastfeeding dyad and address complex lactation problems. IBCLCs specialize in the clinical management of human lactation and breastfeeding. Their certification, accredited by the National Commission on Certifying Agencies, requires that an individual passes the certification exam administered by the International Board of Lactation Consultant Examiners, aka the IBCLE. In addition, IBCLCs adhere to the standard of practice set forth in the IBCLE clinical competencies for practice. Therefore, IBCLCs have the expertise to assist the breastfeeding dyad with clinical problems problems such as infants or mothers with cardiac problems, tongue tie or lip tie, slow weight gain, micropremie, and small for gestational age. Research shows that WIC mothers are more likely to initiate breastfeeding when WIC employs both peer counselors and IBCLCs. While an increasing number of WIC mothers are initiating breastfeeding, it's evidence through low breastfeeding duration rates in WIC that once a mother is discharged from the hospital after delivery, multiple challenges and barriers may be preventing the continuation of breastfeeding. Without IBCLCs in WIC, complex lactation issues are not properly addressed, resulting in early cessation of breastfeeding. Therefore, integrating an IBCLC into a local WIC agency can have an enormous and beneficial impact on breastfeeding initiation and duration rates for WIC participants. I'm now going to discuss the third key way in which the WIC program supports breastfeeding, which is through classes and support groups. In addition to the Breastfeeding Pro Counseling Program and IBCLCs along with other lactation support professionals, WIC offers classes and support groups to breastfeeding participants. These classes and groups are offered regularly and operate as a means to provide additional support to breastfeeding participants. The fourth key way in which WIC supports breastfeeding is through educational materials. 
As I've stated in previous videos, WIC provides nutrition education to participants. With regards to breastfeeding participants, educational breastfeeding materials are given to participants to help them be successful in their breastfeeding journey. My first job out of grad school was at a local agency as the local agency WIC director, and I remember receiving a call from a breastfeeding participant. I had been trained on the benefits of breastfeeding, but I'm not an IBCLC or lactation support professional, and by no means did I feel in any way adequately prepared to help this mom with her breastfeeding issues, but there was the mom who called the clinic in need of breastfeeding support. I spent time with her on the phone and faxed her a copy of one of our breastfeeding handouts to help give her any type of support I could with her breastfeeding journey since she was unable to come into the clinic. And I'm not gonna lie, I felt completely inadequate to help her and I was partially convinced that I hadn't done anything at all. But weeks later, this mom actually came into the clinic and to my surprise, she was still breastfeeding. She said the handout I sent was incredibly helpful for her and while I'm sure she had additional support with regards to breastfeeding outside of WIC, I was glad to have been able to to provide any type of support whatsoever, even if it was in the smallest way possible. Lastly, I'm gonna talk about the fifth key way in which the WIC program supports breastfeeding, and that's through the provision of hotlines for questions. Many state WIC agencies have breastfeeding hotlines that participants can contact at most, if not all hours of the day for breastfeeding support. Participants are able to contact these hotlines anytime so that they can receive the breastfeeding support that they need. So there you have it. The WIC program supports breastfeeding in a myriad of ways. Thank you for joining me today. Day. If you like what you see, please smash the like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And remember, you are your own best advocate. Feed your body well, nourish your soul, nurture your mind, and nutrify your spirit. Remain true to yourself and never forget that every second forward is another opportunity to be a better version of your past self.